Hey guys. So two things. One, I woke up, I went to bed with like 75% battery life. You're joining me here in my sleeping bag. Morning of day five. Not necessarily... Um, coming out... Well, I didn't plan on coming out just yet. Uh, I'm sitting here in my shelter, in my sleeping bag. I gotta say, this new shelter rocks. Ah, oh, pretty. Get out of here. <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely is. So I, I, I was gonna go back to sleep because I only went to sleep at uh, 1.30ish. And I woke up, you know, three times. Once to pee. Uh, another time to... Because it was cold. <laughs> And then now, so I didn't get too much sleep. I got warned by Scott. But I'm going to, uh, oh, sorry. uh, right yeah. Hey, my friends, what do you think of the campfire? Courtesy of Paul, who came in early this morning, and his faithful companion, Pretty. I tell you, that shelter worked out amazing last night. It really did. I mean, I was toasty warm. I used that little sled there and blocked the wind from this side here. Worked out great. Uh, we got some breakfast getting ready to cook. We got a good bed of coals. Thanks to Paul. Paul, say hi. Uh, here we are in the Adirondacks. <laughs> yep. We are... Uh, we're living large right now. It is a gorgeous day. We got nice sunshine. Look at that. Ah. Oh. No sign of Bigfoot, though. <laughs> no Bigfoot. Although something did get those trees moving. You'll see. You probably saw in my last video. Um, something spooked me when I was making that recording. But we don't know what it is. But yeah. You guys take it easy. And uh, I'll get back with you uh, after breakfast is done. Or maybe while I'm cooking breakfast. We'll see. Alright, so it's breakfast time. And I know, I, I told you guys I was waiting for this corned beef hash, which I still have not cooked yet. Still haven't cooked yet. But I do have some chili that I'm heating up. Some frozen chili. And, uh, Little Miss Pretty here, she can't wait to stick her nose in it, that's for sure. But man, what a gorgeous day. I mean, look at the sun peeking through the trees. Ah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, it's cold. But, you know, when it's this nice out, you got a nice fire going. What's to complain about, really? I mean, I, re I honestly, uh, I wanted to set up a nice little uh, Y branch and a bush pot hanger for you guys and show you how to do that. But it got so cold last night, um, I burnt my, uh, I burnt my little Y branch I was going to use for the pot hanger. And then this morning, Paul saw just what looked like a little stick. <laughs> which was the hanger, and he burnt that. So we got no y, no y branch and no pot hanger thanks to us burning them. But, yeah, I'll get back to you when my chili is melted. Because, look. It's like a frozen block. But it'll be good. Oh, look, look who's over. She, see that nose? See that nose getting in there? No pretty. That's my chili. My chili. <laughs> yeah. She's going to have her own, like, this kielbasa. It's like, you know, two feet long. Look at that thing. And she's worried about a little bit of chili that I'm going to eat. Tell you, they they can't ever get enough. 
Remember that. All right, so I'm gonna finish cooking my chili. It's gonna take a while because if I keep it too close, it's gonna burn, and too far away, it's not gonna melt. So, you know, and I have to sit there and hold it because I have no Y branch anymore because I broke it. Uh. Okay, guys. So we did our breakfast. I had my leftover chili. We're gonna get the campfire going here again in a second. But it's time for Pretty and Paul to eat. Paul, oh, he is such a good daddy to Pretty. made for them. Steaming hot fried kibasa. <laughs> and Pretty is very patiently waiting for her share. It's going to get mixed in with her doggy food. Uh, sun is out. Still, and don't let it fool you, it's, it's still very cold, but that shelter this morning, or that shelter last night was so much more comfortable than the one I've been in the past four nights, because it was less windy. I, I only woke up once because I had to pee. Once I think because I was cold, but you know that's that's to be expected when you're out and it's you know below zero at night. Okay, full disclosure, I was not going to go into all this. I wasn't even sure if I was going to put it in this video at all because I have no video of it. But needless to say, I was in my bag and I was sleeping soundly. Well, all of a sudden, what I said was true. I did have to wake up. Um, I did <sighs> night, and I did wake up because I was getting cold. But it's pretty well known. Um, a lot of people went out in cold weather. Will keep a wide mouth bottle in their sleeping bag so that when they urinate, they don't have to get out of their bag. They can just go in the bottle, and then you can actually, you know, even put that against your femoral artery between your legs and actually it'll keep it warm for a little bit. As you see here, you just, you know, neatly want to get it all into the bottle. This is why we use the wide mouth bottles. And when I said I woke up the second time because it was cold, and that was true, uh, because that bottle had gotten cold that I peed in and I needed to get it out from between my legs because it was making me cold. Now herein lies the problem. I also had another bottle in my sleeping bag for drinking out of. And it just so happens I was thirsty at that moment in time. So I woke up a bit chilly at one point and I took a swig of what I thought was my water and it was not my water. Obviously, at this point, you have two choices. Swallow or spit it out. So, needless to say, I got rid of that ASAP. And I luckily didn't swallow any. That doesn't make it any better, though, looking back. But I've devised some methods to prevent against this in the future. This is method A, just simply, you know, if you have any duct tape with you, or simply don't keep two bottles in the sleeping bag at once. One of the other people, you wake up all groggy, you get confused, trust me. <sighs> then comes the shame and the gagging and the spitting and the, yeah, you don't want to deal with it. So, after breakfast, I'm going to go gather some more firewood. Um, maybe I'll take you guys on the journey. As long as I can keep the camera warm and the batteries are good to go, I got time to film it. Hey guys, 
So I'm sitting here enjoying this beautiful sun, and uh, it's so like beneficial having a second person here to help out with things. Like I'm able to sit down, relax, enjoy this, this beautiful, beautiful sun, sunlight in the forest. I mean, look at all that. And Paul gathered some wood, made a campfire. You see all this stuff lined up here? We have to keep that set up there if it's something that can freeze. Because everything here freezes within, you know, an hour. Uh, and I mean everything. So I harvested a little bit of wood as well. I have uh, a few logs here. These are really good hardwoods. We're going to save those for tonight because we'll get a lot more heat out of those than we would like the normal like tight pine that you would find. I'll give you a close up of this. Hopefully you can see it if I get out of the sunlight here. See the tight grain structure on that? It's that's really good solid wood. Honestly, I've been uh, dying to find anything other than hemlock. I hate hemlock. Just to get an idea, let me just for those of you that don't know hemlock or can't identify it or know it by name, let me show you a little something about it. So these are hemlock trees, right? They die a lot. But look at all the little tiny branches on them. Okay, this little sapling here, that's a hemlock. And each branch has a branch with branches off of that and branches off of that. And the thing that makes me very angry with hemlock is that it doesn't want to accept that it's dead. So even when you find a dead hemlock, the little branches, they don't just snap off. You have to like twist, 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 twist. There's about a million of them. I hate hemlock. It is my new worst enemy. And if I'm misidentifying that tree and it is something else, please comment, let me know. But I, I guarantee you hemlock is forever going to be a nasty taste in my mouth from here on forward. End of story. All right, guys. Talk to you later. So, after a little break, a little snack, um, I'm going back to uh, the logs that I cut these pieces of. I cut these pieces a little while ago, these hardwood pieces. So when it comes to uh, making a fire at night time, I want wood that's going to burn for a long time, make nice hot coals, um, and really last. And I cut those two pieces off this log. I really didn't realize how big this thing was. Uh, it's a lot longer than I thought. I mean, each of those pieces are probably seven, eight, nine feet long. But look how much is left. I cleared out around it, so you can really see, I mean, this thing just keeps going. I still haven't found the end of it. I mean, I don't know where this thing ends, but I want to take some more off of this, and I'm just going to keep harvesting it, and the reason being is because you can see if there was no snow, this would be up off the ground. Which means if it was rain, it'd just be like a standing tree that's slightly to one side. It's only going to get hit by rain on one side. It's not going to be sitting in a puddle. Uh, and I can tell you right now, after sawing through it, it's not rotten. So, I want to take as much of this thing as I can. Generally, I go for things that are like standing up in the air, but this is, you know, it's still up off the ground. It'll be good. And it's not hemlock. 
Eat hemlock. Ugh. Oh, I'm so sore. Oh, my back. Oh, chest, hands, my feet, everything is sore. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm not the best in shape. Or the, in the best of shape. So, this is, this is not easy for me. You know, this is not something I do every day. I'm not going out to my backyard and, uh, you know, filming a little video. I've been out here now. This is day five. Up until today, basically alone. Just trying to do what I can to survive. So, I'm going to buck up some more of this. We're going to have a good fire tonight, though. A nice, warm fire. I'll tell you that. And to have a nice, warm fire and a nice warm shelter that's actually you know near the fire that's going to be amazing and with paul's help we're going to have i mean look at the fires he makes look at this he just gathered that like almost in the time it took me to shoot this video all that wood that you see on there he just threw it on there so i mean between the two of us i always say like one fire can heat two people but two people can gather twice as much firewood which means you're gonna be way warmer and look at even even pretty is just chilling and enjoying the heat of the fire everybody's just everybody's just better off I know you guys know how it's been the past few days so, so. This is this is a nice tree. I'll talk to you soon. Hey my friend. I was hoping one of you could help me identify this here type of tree. It's a very hard wood. Um, I just sawed through it quite a few times. But I know it's a hard wood. Um that's the brain structure. This is what the bark looks like. Does anybody know what type of tree this is? Please put in my comments, what is this? Thank you. This is some good hardwood that we're saving for when it gets dark, 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 and cold, cold. Cook it down to negative four degrees today, so. We want to make sure we we have a good amount of firewood stockpiled for the night. As much as I can. Yeah, I stockpile as much wood as I can. I just want you guys to see. I mean, there's there's a lot of work, you know, that goes into this. It's not like most of the time when I film, it's when I'm taking breaks. But that's only because I figure this might be boring for people to watch. You know, me just sawing wood. A lot of people like to film that stuff, and then they'll play it in like high speed. But I don't know. That's, I'm just not a fan of that. I'd rather show you some interesting stuff. Ugh. That's heavy, hard wood. Ugh. We got a lot more of it. Ugh. 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 I mean, I could find a log like this. It's like pine. And it would weigh like one tenth of the weight of this thing. That's why I don't know what this is. That's why I asked you guys to help me identify it. So please, like I said, you know, if you can identify this stuff, please tell me in the comments. I'd really love to know what this is. I showed you the bark pattern on the only piece that had bark on it. I mean, some of the smaller stuff, like over there, we'll, we'll just burn that in half at the beginning of the night. 
But at the end of the night, when I throw whatever wood I got left on the fire, I like to, like, I don't want to do a giant long piece, burn it in half, and then the other two halves just kind of peter out and sit there and they don't burn. So I like to try to make sure that whatever I put on there at the end of the night is actually going to burn through the night. So as you can see, I mean this saw makes quick work of wood. And I mean even this takes a while, so uh, I hope I got that all in frame for you. It's difficult when I'm wearing this thing on my head. But I don't want you to have to sit there and get bored watching me cut wood all day, so I'll be back. This is going to be voice only because it's too dark for you to see me. This is our campsite. we got a torch. torch. That you're looking at my shelter right now. I'm sure you can't see it, but this is the fire. Um, just chilling. I haven't shown much because we've been very busy because the forecast for tonight is minus 4 degrees feels like 11 Fahrenheit. Feels like minus 11 Fahrenheit. So, that means the wind's going to pick up. It's going to be extremely cold. And uh, Paul just talked into his tent. Um, he's got a improvised sleep system that he's going to you know, try to stay warm with. I have my usual, but I was very happy with how my shelter and, and sleeping bag and, you know, my system worked last night, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm sure, you know, I'm not going to be comfortable, you know what I mean? It's not like, you know, sleeping at home where you, you sleep for eight hours, you know, you're going to wake up, you know, every couple hours. You're going to be cold, you're going to have to rearrange yourself and try to get warm and take those cold parts and tuck them up into warm parts. But, for the most part, um, I'm hoping I'll be okay. Um, it's been a frantic day, and I have a feeling tomorrow's going to be just as frantic. So... I guess you guys, this is going to be the last thing I film because it's so cold. Um, I have to keep the camera inside my jacket, or inside my second jacket, to keep the battery warm so it still operates. Um, and it's it's too cold to have my jacket open, so this is going to be the last thing I film. I apologize, but. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning.